Well, uh, good afternoon to everyone around the world. It's a real privilege to have you with us this afternoon, this morning, this evening. Uh, and uh, as you know, this is a part of an international uh, webinar series uh, conference led by Women for Water Partnership in conjunction with its partners, Netwater, and uh, Soroptimist uh, International of the Southwest Pacific with support of the Stolok Stockholm Environmental Institute. And um, you've seen the program. Uh, we have an excellent presenter in the person of Mina Das. I will introduce her shortly. And then we'll have an expert uh, discussion of the presentation with uh, Anjal Prakash. Uh, that will provide his insights uh, of the presentation. We will give everybody, of course, an opportunity to really uh, ask questions and uh, that uh, you are concerned with or what you would like to have more information on. And uh, then we'll have a young water professional, Ilihana Harrington from Imperial College that will uh, give us some uh, insight and some closing remarks. So um, it is really a great opportunity for us in this series of eight webinars with today's one, uh, Rural Bengal Women Coping with Climate Change. And um, of course, the NISTA is a community-based women organization uh, and has been organizing different forms of programs for the empowerment uh, of girls and women in the marginalized strata of the community since 1974. So really a long time. And uh, the operational area of the organization encompasses around 300 of the remotest villages under six community development blocks of South 24 Paragans District in the state of West Bengal, India. And of course, besides ensuring education of the girl children, Nishta has also organized numerous programs involving, especially with the active involvement of rural, adolescent girls and women for the socioeconomic development of the agrarian um, community. So uh, the program that you have seen uh, Mina Das will uh, present the case study and um, that will be followed by the expert discussion and then we will have some question and uh, answer session and uh, there will also be a film that will be uh, showcased and uh, then we will have um, some, some highlights that uh, we would like to lift out and then we will listen uh, uh, towards the end uh, to uh, Eliana. So, uh, and then we'll close off. So it is approximately an hour and 15 minutes. And uh, we really appreciate that you have joined us uh, on this uh, Women for Water Partnership and the webinar series that uh, we are presenting. Uh, myself, I'm the chair of the VASAC, the uh, Global Framework on uh, Water Scarcity in Agriculture, and I will be moderating this afternoon. So once again, welcome to every one uh, of you. So without uh, any ado, I would like to introduce to you uh, Mina Das. Uh, she's a real... 
uh, I would say woman uh, of many talents and uh, she's fighting for equal rights and equal opportunity for women. And uh, that has been her mission. Uh, she's director of NISTA, an NGO in Kolkata. And Mina has been actively involved in girls and women's empowerment uh, issues since the 1970s, mainly by involving girls and women in decision-making processes for the well-being of themselves, their families, and their communities. Much of the work has been concerned with the educating girls up to their uh, PG degree level. And after some have undergone skills development training, many have become entrepreneurs, taking on leadership roles and becoming change makers in their communities. Others have gained independence, often actively solving problems affecting their status and livelihood, as well as should they face violence. In her case, as director of uh, NISHTA, Mina has gained recognition from the government administration of India and has received several national and international awards for her work. The organization has also received recognition for a women's group plan that was conceived to resolve a water crisis in the community. Mina, the floor is yours and we are looking forward to what uh, you are going to present to us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Peli Vienders, for wonderful introduction. I don't know about this type of things about me also. Thank you very much. And uh, should I Namaskar. I am Minadas from Mista. Uh, now you all came to know about the mission of our organization, uh, which we are implementing in uh, West Bengal, India. We are really grateful to you all, especially Ushum Atta, for creating this golden opportunity for the rural women like me, so that I can share about my wonderful experience of working under these leaders. These women are considered as um, uh, illiterate, ignorant, but to us, they are the heroes, real heroes, leaders, change makers, and brave warriors. They themselves are also the victims of violence, but they are committed to work for their fellow sisters. They are, they, they speak up against the violence, taking actions to protect their environment. They have bought in a social network and they facilitate the rural opinion and attitude. But I want to take this opportunity to express my heartfelt gratitude to our guru, our master, Dr. Odin Dev, and as uh, Mrs. Driti Dev, without their unconditional and uh, boundless love, nothing can be happening. Now, I want to show you a, a short film so that you can easily understand the struggle and achievement of them. Really, it is all a successful case study. Please watch the uh, in small video, please. Video, please. We live in a land surrounded by water. No, we are not taking a geography class. We want to tell you the story of what we did in our village. Our village is called Jugdia. It's in the South 24 Parganas district of West Bengal. Our land is like a large basin and there is no escape route. 
so water stagnates during rains. It stays there till the end of winter or the beginning of summer. So we live on a single crop of winter paddy and a host of winter vegetables. In case of a sudden spell of winter shower, this crop also gets inundated. Climate change causes such disasters pretty often nowadays. As a result, we and our children faced the brunt of poverty and hunger. And our men heaved long and heavy sighs and did nothing. They tossed in their beds and spent sleepless nights. Dejection turns into anger. In order to release their tension, they beat us. If you hit a tree, your hand will get bruised. But if you beat us, there is hardly any chance of retaliation. They consider us to be brainless machines. Once installed, we have to work for them day in and day out, bear children for them, even procure food for them when they fail to do it. But we happen to be the most neglected. The cow provides us milk and dung and urine and meat hide and bones, but the cow is never allowed to have a say about whether her milk should be used for human consumption or for her calf, whether she should be sold out now or she should stay back in the family. Women like us are no better than a cow. Our men can never conceive of consulting us to solve their problems. But we knew we had to come together to find a way out. Discussions continued near water taps on the steps of the local pond while walking back home within the hamlet and finally in community meetings. These discussions resulted in working out a plan. We lent our hands to prepare a model. আমাদের জলবায়ুর আবহাওয়ার যে পরিবর্তনটা মানে যখন আমাদের বৃষ্টির প্রয়োজন হয় তখন আমরা বৃষ্টিটা পাই না কিন্তু যখন আমাদের বৃষ্টির প্রয়োজন হয় না তখনই অসময় বৃষ্টিটা চলে আসে ধরুন চাষের জন্য যে পরিমাণ জলের প্রয়োজন সেটা আমরা কিন্তু এই যে খালটা রয়েছে আ চ্যানেল মাস্ট বি এক্সকেভেটেড এন্ড কানেক্টেড উইথ দ্য এক্সিস্টিং ক্যানেল টু লেট দ্য স্ট্যাগনেটেড ওয়াটার আউট আমার নাম আরাস সরদার গ্রামের সবাই আমাকে মাস্টার মশাই বলে চেনেন This man acts as a liaison between the villagers and the panchayat. We call him master. আমাদের মহিলাদের একটা মডেল তৈরি করে সেই মডেল অনুসারে আমার কাছে আসে এসে আমি সেই মডেলটা অনুসরণ করে নিয়ে গিয়ে পঞ্চায়েতে যায় পঞ্চায়েত Now master led all of us to the panchayat. Women in front and men following them. <laughs> छोट खाल जुगदिया ग्रामे भरे ढुके खाली बाड़ी हवा मईला पड़े आवर्जना पड़े खाली बंद हो गए जार फिर चाषाई है ना दिखे जेहेतु को खाल नहीं संलग्न एलिकार मध्य तेने बिस्टि हम समस्या ना हम समस्या तरह क्योंकि ये खाल संस्कार भीषण भाव प्रयोजन और एक विषय जेटा हे खाल जदि संस्कार क्यों जलर परिमाण बाढ़ एमते ही अतिबृष्टि हम क्यों जमीते जल जमे जाए तरजे एखान एक नतून खाल काटार परिकल्पना जेटी धोसा खाले का जलटा बड़िए धोसा खाल जलटा बड़िए जाए 
আবার যখন জলের প্রয়োজন হবে যখন বৃষ্টি অল্প হবে তখন এই খালে যদি জল থাকে তাহলে এই সংলগ্ন এই খাল সংলগ্ন যে জমিগুলো থাকবে সেখানে ভালোভাবে চাষ হবে এবং এটা সংস্কার করালে তো এই জমিগুলো ভালোভাবেই চাষ হবে পঞ্চায়েত ইগলি লিসেন টু ইট এন্ড রেডিলি এগ্রিড টু আওয়ার প্রপোজাল এটা চিন্তা করছেন যে এলাকা চাষী 150 টাকা ঘন্টা জলসেচ ব্যবস্থায় থেকে তিরিশ টাকা ঘন্টায় যদি জল সেচ করতে পারি তাহলে এক বিঘে চাষ করলে আমরা দু হাজার টাকা শুধু জল সেচের উপর থেকে বাঁচবে এবং অনায়াসে আমরা জল সেচ ব্যবস্থা চালু করতে পারবো এবং চাষের সুফলটা আমরা পাব সেই জন্যে আমি আমরা পঞ্চায়েতের তরফ থেকে বলছি পাশে আমার প্রধান সাহেব বসে আছে তো আমি আমরা চাইব আমাদের পঞ্চায়েতের মেম্বারদের সঙ্গে এক দফা আলোচনা হয়ে আছে চাষিদের নিয়ে সদস্যদের নিয়ে একটা সার্বিক আলোচনা একটা সুষ্ঠু ফল আমরা যাতে পেতে পারি সেই জন্য সেই আলোচনা আমরা করার ব্যবস্থা করছি sat with Nishtha in a meeting to explore the possibility of realizing the plan made by the women. The ball has just started rolling. The movement is sure to reach its coveted end because women and only women can solve the problem of water. Extend your hand. They need your solidarity to strengthen their movement. লকডাউন ফেজ এগ্রিকালচার only agriculture saved us saved india world bank had strongly recommended for investing double amount of agriculture agriculture for strengthening the economy of india so it, uh, agriculture is the lifeline and without women contribution you cannot expect any agriculture agricultural product please next slide please and next next women women has a huge contribution in rural economy maybe in agriculture animal dairy fisheries so many things next right but ironically due to the decorian custom even 1% women does not have ownership of their land and they don't have any decision making power at all stages of the development processes for this reason is the prime motto to ensure that women and men have equal access and control over the resources next slide please in any adverse situation the men become easily disquieted and girls and women become the soft target of their frustration and anger they also torture the girls and women with are becoming drunk with the money from selling out the ration 
provided by the government and NGOs like NISTA. They are this way, men try to come out from their frustration and anger. But at the same time, women are struggling hard to, um, to shape their children, their family, their community, and their uh, nature. Next slide, please. Now, I want to share one case study. You have seen also uh, in the short film. In Jukdia village, under Mokraha 2 3D plot, there is a big plot of land. More than 400 farmers cultivate in this plot. Long time back, farmers used to raise four crops in a year in this land. For the last few years, entire plots get waterlogged in monsoon and experience acute water scarcity during the summer. And due to this, they cannot cultivate during the summer. Gradually, most of the male farmers have switched over to avenues of learning other than agriculture. But women didn't agree with their men as they had confidence that we would overcome this problem. Next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, and the women group, the, the women group members of the area discussed on this issue again and again and uh, came out with a well lit plan to overcome this hindrance. Not only that, they also prepared a model with the mark and locally available materials like engineers. They have shown the points of existing narrow canal in this plot, which was which were silted out. But this narrow canal is attached with the big canal which was used for irrigation. And they also demanded that on the other side of their plant, of their plot, there should be a narrow canal. As fortunately, during that time, another big canal was um, um, uh, canal was digging out. They raised their voice that this narrow canal through their uh, cultivation land, the new canal, um, uh, when they it will be um, excavated, uh, they want to be sure that uh, it will um, the sloping it will be sloping down to the big new canal so that they can drain out the excess water during the monsoon and if they have unexpected rain due to a climate change. And they, they have also, uh, they, they have also formed a cooperative and they would make savings like other groups of NISTA. They have planned to hire some pump set so that immediately they can, uh, they can um, uh, 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 drain out the excess water from their lands in case of heavy rainfall in order to shape their farming during the climate change. You are thinking that it is so easy job, just digging out two narrow canal and uh, attach the narrow canal with the big canal so that they can irrigate their uh, land and drain out the excess water. No, it is not so easy. Most of the farmers of this area are the small and marginal farmers. They were not ready to donate a little part of their land for this canal. And some of the landowners, they are rich and living in the city. They don't have any interest in cultivation and they were dead against of this plan and they didn't agree uh, to give a small plot of land 
for this canal. And their plan also need lots of money. Then they mobilize the all stakeholders, farmers, sharecroppers, panchayats, and the local officials. Somehow they have concerted efforts reached to the uh, state level administration, the higher officials. You have seen the picture of the meeting, the higher officials, state level offic officers, they had to come and organize a big meeting to discuss at length on this issue. They accepted and recognized the planning. They declared money is not a problem. Execution of the plan has already been started. This is a marvelous achievement for these women. But I want to share one thing with you all that this is not a perennial problem or for this area only. There are so many farmers in our district and other district of our state, they are suffering from the same problem. If you replicate this model in those area also, hundreds and hundreds of farmers will be benefited. This plan was made by the women, only by these women, the trusted women who are illiterate, ignorant person. Next slide, please. They, they can, as they think that she, water bodies, plants, all are living beings as the women are. To them, nature signifies love, care, and protection, and women have all the qualities. Next slide, please. But this we, the rural women, that uh, who live in remotest area, they know about their problem very well. What is the problem? What they need? How they need? When they need? But nobody cares. But my question is, how many days? they will be passive recipient only. But I am not ignoring that many times we are not invited so many, many things. But uh, we have, but have you ever thought, why at all should we attend? Are we ever? Why we never speak in these meetings? Because you have not taught us your language or deliberately you want us so that we keep quiet. We are not feeling comfortable, rather we feel insulted. So why should we going to attend this meeting um, destroying our time? Rather we can fight with tiger and crocodiles and catch fish to feed our children, to save our family. So we have an earnest request to you all, instead of sliding us as stupid, illiterate, non-entities, non why don't you learn to work hand in hand with us? If you can come down from your altar, you will get the chance to instill life into your knowledge and wisdom. Your knowledge earned through years of study and research needs to be enriched with the generation of experience of our mothers and sisters. In order to arrive at a tangible and sustainable solution to the problem created by the climate change, we request you all to start doing it now Please, it is never too late. With our sincerity and honesty, we can still have, we can still save the world from the impending doom so that we can leave behind 
a better world for our next generation. Next slide, please. Thank you for your patience. Well, I think, uh, Mina, really inspiring. Thank you very much for an excellent presentation that we all enjoyed. I've seen all the uh, messages coming through on the chat room. And uh, it, it is really, I, I even get goosebumps in terms of uh, the way how you present it and the uh, work that you have done. So, so thank you, thank you very much. Uh, just for our uh, audience from all over the world, um, we would like to say this whole proceedings are being recorded <clears throat> and it will be posted on uh, the YouTube of the website of the uh, Women for Water. So, um, uh, it will be uh, after this webinar, it will be available to everyone. And uh, there were also people to ask and ask uh, your uh, presentation, uh, Mina, and I'm sure uh, uh, you are willing to also share that uh, presentation to them. So, so thank you very much. We are now going and uh, you're well on time. Thank you very much uh, for keeping uh, up with the time. And uh, I'm now going to ask our Thank expert uh, discussion, discussion, Dr. Anyal Prakash. Now, just to give a little bit of background, Dr. Anyal Prakash is a research director and adjunct uh, associate professor in the Bharti Institute of Public Policy at the Indian School of Business, Hyderabad, India. And before joining, of course, the uh, Indian School of Business, he was an associate pre professor in the Department of Regional Water Studies at the Terry School of Advanced Studies, New Delhi, India. And he published uh, numerous books. Uh, I'm just going to mention one or two, uh, like the Dark Zone, Groundwater Irrigation, uh, Politics and Social Power in North uh, Gujarat. Um, even case studies from South Asia. But uh, in terms of uh, his whole involvement and uh, books that he has published uh, through the Oxford University Press, uh, he's a graduate of the Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai, India, and the Wageningen University and Research, the Netherlands. He has worked in the area of water and climate change for over two decades, focusing on policy research, advocacy, capacity building, knowledge management, networking, and implementation of large-scale and multi-country development projects uh, in South Africa. Uh, please, uh, we are listening to you, Anjal. Thanks so much, Prelix. That was a, a wonderful introduction. And uh, I'm very humbly, uh, just to say that, uh, this has been a humbling experience for me to listen to Mina. Uh, very interesting case study. And um, first of all, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all the people around the world. Uh, and thanks so much for joining us. Um, uh, I'm here to just give a couple of pointers uh, from what Mina's uh, case study is, uh, is telling us and trying to extrapolate this to a kind of a wider issues of uh, involving women uh, and climate change uh, issues. Uh, I'm at the moment, uh, uh, in fact, this is very timely for me because I'm part of the IPCC uh, uh, group as a lead author and I'm coordinating uh, one of the coordinators of gender cross chapter box, which actually integrates gender issues across uh, the, um, the different chapters in which uh, IPCC is producing this report, which is going to be available very soon about 2022. And then some of the issues that Mina has uh, brought in has relevance for that one and try to locate that. One is that before this uh, IPCC report, the present assessment, which is going on, there are three assessment reports which has come in the form of a special report, uh, which looked at three uh, special issues. One is uh, the issue of global warming uh, and how do we keep uh, the earth temperature to about 1.5 degree. Second is the uh, focus on issues of uh, 
oceans and the impact of climate change on oceans and cryosphere. These two interdependent uh, sectors. Uh, and third was uh, the focus on the land. And all these three uh, reports, which uh, took about three to four, five years and hundreds of uh, re researchers across the globe, climate researchers and scientists across the globe were involved in these three reports. Uh, one thing which was very common in all three reports that the climate is one is the climate is changing very rapidly, very fast, and it's impacting different sectors um, uh, in a very, very different variety of different ways. But, uh, and second part is the human um, interaction part of it. The, the impact of this climate change is, uh, is uh, disproportionately on the poor uh, men and women, and especially a lot on the women. And that is something that, you know, if you look at land resources, you look at the ocean warming up and its impact on the fishing communities or in the high mountain areas where women work, uh, you know, in those areas as, uh, as uh, uh, agricultural uh, farmers, uh, or you have uh, uh, the heat waves which is impacting. So all these issues had brought in uh, the central uh, um, uh, concern that women uh, are disproportionately uh, uh, impacted by the climate change. Now, just trying to relate these issues with the presentation that Mina has brought in. In fact, the Mina's presentation is on the solution space that how, what do we do to engage one is the, that these women, in fact, those the one of the world's poorest women who are impacted by climate change had not contributed a single, uh, you know, bit to do to the changing climate. In, they are always in the receiving end because uh, uh, their lifestyle, if you look at the lifestyle of these poor people, they are all carbon negative lifestyle. They are working on recycling issues. They care a lot about environment. Um, uh, so, so this issue uh, of them not contributing anything to the process of climate change, but at being has been uh, receiving end. And my work has been in West Bengal and in rural Bangladesh, where I, I work very closely with rural women, especially the women of these communities, and I can vouch for uh, some of the issues which has come up. Now, before I move to um, to the uh, to a couple of two or three points that I would like to focus on, one issue which I found myself very important is uh, when you engage women in the in the process of development, especially uh, when in the development programs and on programs of climate change, what I find always that women are so very uh, full of uh, their work in a sense that their schedule is totally uh, full. How do we make out time? And that, that brings on to the whole, whole issue of what we call the time poverty for women. Now, time poverty is understood as a shortage of time available to devote for purely pro, uh, personal requirements, including leisure and some relational activities that women have. Um, but this is something that is uh, that has been on a very scarce uh, uh, resource for them because of the increasing uh, 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 stress that the environment has been bringing in through climate change process, increasing stress in their economic activities. As Mina was also pointing out about the climate change impacting agriculture. And that agriculture issues are bringing in economic hardship for men. So women have to do much more uh, uh, stressful jobs. Uh, and then that is the impact of this. In, this has been on them. Now, just to give you some statistics for especially coming from, from India, this is coming statistic coming from the Organization of Economic Cooperation Development, OECD, uh, that has done a, a you know study which showed us that uh, on an average in India, women work six hours per day per day on uh, domestic work. This is, mind you, this is 5.77 times more than men, and at least 40% of uh, of more uh, you know this is more than the women in South Africa and China. So you can imagine women in India have been so overworked with their, uh, their time uh, involvement and the contribution to the domestic uh, uh, work that they do. But in the return, what happens to them is that they have been facing extremely uh, you know, constraints on their time. Uh, I know that some of the women, this is an average figure of set, uh, six hours is an average figure, but if you, uh, and that includes uh, four, 500 million of middle class, which is rising in India uh, and also survives on care economy. That means the poorer women support the middle class women so that women class, middle class women go out and work. And that is the, that, that's part of it. So, so in, in that sense, poorer women in the urban areas uh, you know, take care of their own household plus take care of their, uh, you know, employer's household and, uh, and their work time increases in that sense. So first of these issues are uh, of how do we bring in more time for women so that they have more leisure time one and also how, what is that, that the, the portion of the time 
actually goes into a policy making process in terms of their political participation which actually helps them in, in improving their own case and that's the the part which is very important according to me uh, some of the recent uh, report which is national sample survey report which shows about 92 percent of women spend most of their time on domestic duties uh, among those who spent most of the time on domestic duties about 60 percent in rural areas and 64 percent in urban areas they did uh, so be, because the reason that there was no other member in their household to carry domestic activity duties. And this, the, the rest of the 8% do it because of their own preference. So the very small proportion of people, they do, women, they do it because of their own, proportion, own uh, preferences, but large portion of women, because of the lack of institutional uh, facilities, uh, you know, for childcare or for other things, it is very difficult for women to have a full-time paid job, which actually brings in economic resources and also uplift themselves in terms of the self-worth that they have. Uh, and that is the whole issue that we, we come. Uh, now, let me, because of the positive time, I'll come to three points, which is uh, which could be uh, on the solution space. We're looking at women, gender issues with women and water issues, and, and on to top, the climate change, which is coming as an external uh, uh, process, which stresses these uh, relationship already. So one is that what, uh, at the moment, what we're doing now in as part of IPCC, we were trying to look into how gender issues are, in, especially the adaptation options across the world. And we looked at about six, 700 papers, uh, published paper to understand the relationship between the, uh, uh, the uh, adaptation options, uh, how gender sensitive they are, and in relation to the, the sustainable development goal. What we found is a very initial studies, and we I'll not like to reveal this because this is, has to go through a pre approved process, Process. But one thing that I can reveal at this point of time is that most of the adaptation options that is carried out as a good adaptation options are actually gender, very gender insensitive. They accentuate uh, gender relationship in the fear of men and uh, are not helping women as much as we, we wish them to. And that's very important finding that we are trying to put together and we are, we are uh, now uh, uh, you know, trying to do the assessment to show how difficult it is. Uh, the adaptation options and how important adapt, uh, for, is it, it is for the policy makers to make gender sensitive adaptation options, uh, which is favors work to the favor of women. And Mina's case actually brings in that point of how you can actually make a adaptation option here in this case, the rejuvenation of a pond or a canal system uh, makes it when uh, gender sensitive when you're involving women in the, in the process of uh, planning, execution, and uh, the benefits that derive from this one. So that's the, the point that I will try to win. Let me just focus on three points and I'll close my uh, discussion here, uh, my talk here. One is that what we found is that there were very less in, uh, you know, data on disaggregate, which was disaggregated by sex. So when the generation changes over time, you're not able to track how this, uh, uh, this goes over a period of time and in what condition uh, the generations becomes positive relationships of uh, between men and women. And that's something the, uh, and second part of it is also intersectionality issues, how uh, this interlinkages with climate change. So you're not able to decipher the information because you'd lack uh, uh, disaggregation of data by sex. And that is something that I would like to put. And because you do not have this information, you're not able to pinpoint on the um, larger changes process which is taking place, which is in the favor of women or against women's work or for favoring some other class of people, that is very difficult to decipher. So what we do is that we rely, rely on small case studies and that is very sporadic. So it doesn't give you an overall picture. So that's point number one of ha having a uh, gender disaggregated data, um, uh, which will give us pointers for policy makers at different levels, uh, be it local level, be it a national level or international level, that will we'll try and influence gender sensitive policy. That's number one. Uh, I would actually call it gender transformative policies because that's the part which we are working on. Second is that we need to also have the program that not only strengthens women's uh, 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 capacity to implement certain program, but also giving them independent uh, income, which is goes directly in their account. And that is something that is the concept of, and here the issue of domestic violence, which was raised by uh, Mina, I, I find it, it's very, it's a patriarchy 
uh, and the patriarchal structure that is there which uh, actually uh, uh, you know works against uh, uh, the, i mean works uh, in a in a in a process it actually accentuates domestic domestic violence and there are very stringent laws in india but the social taboos is as much and to stay stick into stick with the marriages the pressure on women to stick into a, a marriage even if it is a violent marriage is very high so that they don't report this to to the police stations and all that so this is something that probably is a, something that we need to really critically think about uh, i would actually propose the concept which is there in india for a long time we call it sridhan sridhan is women's wealth that means women's independent income that goes to her own account and she has fully rights over this one it's a, it's a concept at this moment uh, there are many places that we have uh, we have uh, we have done it uh, in a sense we have it um, in the middle class women but lower class and low caste women it is very difficult to is to uh, establish but we try and uh, pose this as one of the solution states third one which i i in this very close to my heart is what we call women's political participation unless women participate uh, politically in the process of uh, representation their own representation uh, and uh, in the local bodies be it panchayat with the lo lowest level of economic uh, of uh, political representation or in the other spheres of political life they will be very difficult for them to um, uh, represent themselves so these are three points i would like to focus on and i will uh, like to close my uh, my uh, talk at this moment i'll be happy to uh, take any questions further thank you so much meena for uh, giving us a wonderful case study which uh, actually links with uh, the point that i was trying to make also thank you so much dr prakash uh, thank you very much for a thorough expert uh, discussion on the presentation of meena uh, i'm sure meena also appreciate those valuable comments we now have the opportunity for our uh, audience uh, yes please mina would you like to say something yes i want to say something that uh, uh, yes we know the landowner all the landowners are the main but we are fighting against them we are organizing women so that they can demand that they can enjoy equal rights and equal opportunity not only that we are also organizing men also we uh, we are trying to they make them gender sensitive they are helping us also and we are trying to gender sensitize the higher officials who walk through the corridor of power so our efforts not only to empower only the women uh to create a strong um, public opinion in favor of women so that everybody can join everybody can help everybody can be sensitized but one thing i can say we strongly believe at nista that in this critical time of ecological environmental economic and social crisis it is necessary to honor the motherly humanitarian approach of women that to bridal the speech of approaching the dooms days and women are very much sincere and women love nature women are uh, try hard and soul to protect the nature they don't destroy anything like the men but i am not talking about all the men there are so many nice men like you and other people but uh, <laughs> but most of the male in rural area if you live with us for a few days you can see most of the male i uh, uh, take this torture and exploitation and deprivation from resources for this women it is quite natural to them thank you so we are we not we have to take the women so that they can give leadership otherwise there will be no peace in this world absolutely the women can bring the peace thank you thank you mina very much for that uh, comments before we go to the question and answers i'm going to um, introduce iliana um, 
our young water professional uh, for her comments. And uh, just to give you a brief indication of Ileana, uh, Ileana Harrigan earned a master's in environmental technology with a specialization in global environmental change and policy at Imperial College London. And uh, very interesting, excellent thesis uh, that she had, and uh, that is entitled Gender Environment Nexus, the case of irrigation, gender and development. Examined the gender barriers to irrigation in rural India and the potential effects of their removal, particularly in relation to the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals or the SDGs. She previously comes from an international development background and spent a year working as a medical coordinator in a school in Cueto, Ecuador. Uh, Ilana has a BA in Geography and International Development from the University of Sussex and the Master of Science in International Development and Humanitarian Emergencies from the London School of Economics and Political Science. Uh, Ileana, thank you very much. We uh, look forward to listen to you. Hello, can everyone hear me? Yes, we can yep. hear you. Cool, so hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're listening from. Uh, thanks Felix for that wonderful introduction. And for, uh, thank you to the previous speakers for the extremely interesting insights and perspectives. I'm Eliana Harrigan and I'm representing the Young Water Professionals and I'm here to speak about the future of women, water and climate change in West Bengal. But next slide please. So reflections on what's been said so far. There has been a great deal of progress that has been made to boost the gender environment nexus. And you can see from the rise of international treaties such as the Paris Agreement, the Sustainable Development Goals, that there is an increasing awareness of the, the power of combining the environment and women. Um, and that does fill me with hope especially seeing as the, the planetary system is so interconnected that if you do something in India, that might have positive effects elsewhere in the world. You know, that, that to me is really exciting. Um, but unfortunately, there is still a lot to be done. There's a lot of work left to do in order to combat both climate change and patriarchal norms. And the situation would drastically worsen if we continue on our current trajectory, if we carry on business as usual. So how do we break out of this? Next slide, please. Women as environmental decision makers. Women should be environmental decision makers. You know, that's it, as, as our previous panelists have mentioned. Women consist of 70% of the world's poor and are highly vulnerable to environmental shocks as a result of this. Women and girls are disproportionately affected by climate change. And this could be through daily activities. So for instance, a girl may have to walk further to collect water as a result of water scarcity and therefore miss out on her education. Or there are more extreme examples such as the high, disproportionately high female death rate during natural disasters, which are increasing in both frequency and intensity as a result of climate change. So for instance, during the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami, four times as many women died as men. And there were many reasons for this, but one of the reasons is that women couldn't swim as well, or just women couldn't swim at all. Why is this? Additionally, women tend to be shock absorbers during times of crisis, whereby for instance, if there's a limited amount of food, they will give their food to their children and their husband. They will make that sacrifice for their family, but then obviously they immediately suffer. Another thing that should be mentioned is that the amount of conflicts that occur because of climate change will also rise and armed conflicts disproportionately affect women and girls. So when it's an armed conflict based on climate change, you know, where does that leave women? They need a voice in decision-making. How can you genuinely create holistic climate change policy 
without involving the most affected. I don't think you can, to be honest. Then more generally, uh, excuse me, more generally, women have different knowledges and expertise regarding the environment to men as a result of gendered roles and responsibilities. So as mentioned, women go to collect firewood, they go to collect water, they grow food for cooking. Women spend a lot of time outside, especially in developing countries. And if you are exposed that much to something, then you naturally learn about it. So uh, uh, women have a lot, a lot of knowledge of environmental and ecological processes that is not being incorporated in environmental policy. So consequently, climate change can only be combated by involving women in decision-making at all levels, local, national, and global, and from the very beginning of the projects until the end. It's not suddenly halfway through a project, people are like, should we ask a woman about this? No, from the beginning until the very end. Environmental policy is currently being deprived of the specific expertise and perspectives women have regarding ecological processes. And from an economic perspective, this can lead to a huge waste of resources. How can you attempt to fix an issue when you do not speak to those with direct exposure to an issue? With this, there is a huge potential for a misallocation of money. But it should be mentioned here that it's important to incorporate all women and include intersectionality into gender inclusivity. So by that I mean the struggles of higher caste women will be different from the struggles of lower caste women, but both of these struggles are equally valid and both should be incorporated into environmental decision making. Women should not be an umbrella term, it should be all groups of women. And mentioning this, tokenism should be avoided. Superficial representation is not the same as genuine participation. So the voices mustn't only be there physically, but they should be heard. Next slide, please. Oh, next slide, please, thank you. Uh, so, oh, sorry, go back one. Thank you, sorry. Uh, so here is a figure to kind of highlight what I'm saying. It's the heads of national environment sectors by sex. It's from 2015, so maybe the numbers have changed a little bit, but as you can see, there is quite obviously a huge power imbalance in environmental decision-making. And you know, what does this mean for water scarcity? What does this mean for climate change? If the figure were a little more evenly distributed, what world would we be living in? Next slide, please. So we're speaking about the future. Let's be hopeful. We hear a lot of doom and gloom in the news, particularly now in the current situation that we find ourselves in. So let's think if women were more involved in environmental decision making, how could this benefit everyone? And as a result of the positive multiplier effect of increased gender equality, Strengthening the role of women in, environment, in environmental decision making would lead to the overall realization of sustainable development goals. And friendly reminder, the sustainable development goals or the SDGs should be reached by 2030. So that only leaves us nine years and two months to hit those targets. So now we're looking for efficiency, right? So let's investigate this a little further. Women tend to be more nurturing of the environment around them. So if there are greater gender inclusivity in water-based decision-making, there would be greater conservation of water, both in terms of quantity and quality, because more water would be preserved generally, but lower amounts of uh, chemicals such as pesticides and fertilizers are used by women. And that would lead to greater human and environmental health. Additionally, if women's voices are heard and environmental needs are addressed, then climate change may become less gendered. And that ties into the idea of climate justice and climate power imbalances. Socially, women tend to spend a greater proportion of their income on household well-being than men. Uh, so they'll spend more on nutritious food, they spend more on education, they spend more on healthcare. And aspects of well-being are mutually reinforcing. So if one increases, the others follow. 
Additionally, uh, female empowerment tends to have intergenerational effects. So it's not only her children that are benefiting, but it's her children's children and her children's children. So if you invest in women, you're not only investing in that individual, you're investing in the future. You're investing in the future of society and in the future of the planet. Furthermore, and I'm sure one that uh, we all agree with, social patriarchal norms will be dismantled. And that to me is great. If we give women positions of power, positions of authority, women will start to be viewed as, viewed as active agents. And this will greatly change uh, opinions and traditional views that you know people may have but they may be tensions as a result of this and that's why it's important to really eradicate tokenism we want the women to be heard we don't just want them there next slide please thank you oh sorry back one thanks uh so politically what would be the effects if there are more voices to be heard, there are more eyes to see what's going on. And those who have control over a resource tend to have greater access over it. You know, you control it and you want it, so you're gonna get it. But by involving different groups such as women, there could be lower levels of corruption in terms of environmental resource allocation. And then that will increase transparency and accountability in environmental projects. Thinking long term, other departments may be inspired to boost their gender inclusivity if they see the environmental sector doing so. So, you know, uh, the energy sector might get involved, the transport sector might get involved. There will be many knock on effects to this. Economically, as mentioned by one of our panelists, um, if women are increasingly giving space in the productive sphere rather than purely the domestic sphere, their incomes will increase and hence lower levels of invisible labour. And that will greatly help the, the well-being of the household, as mentioned. But there would be greater investment into the local community because, for instance, women may go to the hairdressers which they hadn't been able to before so that will lead an income stream to the local community and eventually make it thrive finally as i've mentioned there are many knock-on effects there are many feedback loops that go on in the planetary system and there are a lot of things that we don't know so if we boost uh gender inclusivity in environmental decision making what does that mean for the rest of the world what does that mean for ocean health if we improve female uh, 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 sorry if, what does it mean for ocean health if we improve female representation in environmental decision making and there are many unprecedented benefits which we may see next slide please So, conclusions, a lot of amazing work has been done and is being done, and I would just in this moment like to send out a cosmic wave of gratitude to everyone who is helping out in times that may seem difficult. Uh, so yeah, lots of amazing work, lots of great work is being done, but you know, there's always still a bit more to be done. Women are still excluded from environmental decision making, and this should be stopped as soon as possible. Women should be included. You know, climate change is gendered, and not involving women in political decision making is leaving huge gaps in policy, which are entirely avoidable, leading to a huge waste of resources. As gender equality and water accessibility are both critical to a societal progression, Boosting the gender environment nexus will not only work to combat climate change, but would also help to achieve the sustainable development goals, which will ultimately lead to a more peaceful, more sustainable society, economy and environment. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ileana. Thank you. Uh, well presented uh, from the chat room. You could see the messages coming through uh, of appreciation. 
in terms of what you presented and in terms of your um, really insight in, in what is happening in, in that region. So thank you very much for that. We will now have a, a question and answer session. And we have already received six uh, questions. And um, I will uh, sort of uh, ask the panelists uh, if they could uh, reply shortly uh, in terms of those questions. Uh, first one is uh, Susan Murphy who asked, did, uh, and most probably that is for Mina. So uh, Mina, uh, she asked, did it take a long time to get a chance to present your ideas? Uh, how would you react on that? Um, I am not understanding that question properly. Could you please uh, repeat it? Yeah, in Same terms thing. of all the initiatives that you take uh, to get recognized uh, in terms of your voice uh, uh, within what you are doing, the yeah. question is, did it take a long time to get that change, uh, to present your ideas? Yeah. Yes, uh, it has taken a long time because this case study, if this question is related this case study. So uh, the local um, authority, the local administration confessed that they tried many times that but could not. Uh, it is very complicated. And uh, people generally um, uh, in West Bengal, in our state, people have small, small plot of land, not like in Punjab, Haryana, but in a, for this reason, these people do not want to donate the land. So we, uh, we took our uh, women's group members, especially the leaders, they took long time to convince the people and make them convinced to donate the land so that they can dig out the canal. But now they are successful. I want to share one thing. If you give us the decision-making power, if you give us the position of leader, I know we don't have enough education. We don't have any, uh, any certificate of university, but we can do. We can do. And if we do, it will be a peaceful, less conflict, there will be less conflict. Every, everybody will be happy. I am agree with Ileana that when we work, we work for all. Mm. We have humanity. Women means humanity. And when the men work, they only think about the certain level of work. And they concentrate only on their plan. They don't think about the humanity or other things. So it takes time. It will take long time because patriar patriarchy, it is due to patriar patriarchy and due to patriarchy, our social norms and systems are very conservative and very complicated. To win the, uh, overcome this problem, it is really time consuming. But we have to invest our time, energy, and education and experience to um, to stop this patriarchy. Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Mina. Uh, a question that uh, linked to that is from uh, Saratna uh, Saratna Narayanan, and she asked Mina, "How did you get the men to listen to the women?" Uh, I think you alluded to that, but uh, maybe a short answer to that as well. Uh, yes, yes. Um, uh, when women started raising their voice that time at the beginning, um, the uh, men didn't agree with women. They completely um, uh, frustrated and they, um, they opined that uh, 
no no it is useless we want to go to the city and uh, earn work for eight hours and, and whatever little amount whatever meager amount you will have to manage your family but slowly slowly when the leaders try to sensitize them some of the farmers they trying to understand the outcome of the planning then we engage this um, uh, this strong farmers and share coppers to sensitize the other farmers and other share coppers and not only that there there were so many politics and uh, few political leaders they were against us few political leaders of ruling party they was uh, uh, they was they were very help uh, helping uh, used to help us very much by this way in, um, uh, we can say each day we created new plan to convince the men a uh, convince the men is a tough work but we are successful we have big big groups of men change maker groups we call it change makers group they are helping the women groups and with the help of them we are successful thank you uh, mina uh, susan murphy uh, also asked uh, over what period of time was this plan developed was it a year uh, maybe weeks or months uh, just indication huh. about uh, four years four years okay yes so it is a quite a long time uh, showing it's the endurance time, but and not, yes. uh, the commitment by the women to, to really uh, yes. convince people uh, to accept uh, also their plan. Uh, Kusum Atyukurala mm -hmm. uh, said, uh, post uh, COVID-19, how and where will we be able to get funds for essential capacity building programs on climate adaption for women farmers and irrigators? Yes. And most probably that is not the answer that you might be able to, to answer, but uh, any ideas, uh, uh, Mina? Huh? Yes. And uh, during the COVID-19, I am so proud to express my experience. You can't imagine the leaders of our girls group, 14 years old, 15 years old girls, and the boys group. We have also uh, Kishore Bahini. Kishore means uh, adolescent boys. Bahini means uh, team. And uh, uh, these boys and girls group leaders, they take the role of a frontline service providers. They fought against all the all all these uh, difficulties. They with a cycle. They are weapon. Uh, they had only one weapon. Till now, they are fighting with uh, with a cycle. They are roaming here and they are they are visiting the uh, every corner of the villages. They are motivating the rich people to donate their uh, uh, do, donate their rice and vegetables so that they can distribute the family. And uh, they also worked hard till now. They are working hard uh, to shape their um, uh, uh, environment. They are uh, preparing a big list and depositing to the local government, the panchayat. Panchayat has got huge money uh, under MGNREGA. And they are requesting them, you have to implement this planning so that we, we, uh, we have clean water. We can plant the uh, plantation so that groundwater can be recharged. And you have to uh, dig out the big canals, reconstruct the big canal so that we can use the canal water for irrigation and people will not use 
underground water for the irrigation. They have prepared many plants and the women, the leaders of the women, they are also preparing plants and deposit. Depo um, uh, till now work is going on, they are depositing it to the authority and already um, uh, two canal uh, they have reconstructed so that farmers can use the water as we are very much afraid that coming days will be more dreadful. We are living in a maze and yeah. you, can, you can imagine the condition is so dreadful, so critical. We don't have any income, any food, nothing. We are, de de uh, everybody is depending only on the ration given, provide, provided by the government and NGOs like Nishka. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mina. And uh, I've got a question here for Ilihana, where Sarah Wilkin said, uh, great presentation, Ilihana. Very true. How can you create uh, policies without involving the people most affected? And what steps do we need to take to do this? And how can we increase access to investment and finance? Mm -hmm. Just and, unmute yourself. Yeah, no, that, yeah. that is to Ileana. <laughs> yeah, thank you for the question. Um, so what steps do we need to take? I think, as I said earlier, um, there, there will be some tensions. If, if you're suddenly like, women are in power now, I'm sure a few people will think, mm, I don't know, you know, there's deeply ingrained uh, patriarchal views in society. So. I think it's important to kind of create like a transition um, in order to alleviate any potential trade-offs. Um, so uh, I, I already know that in India, the, the 15th of October is like the National Women's Farmer Day or something. Okay. Um, so, you know, really boosting that, uh, in increasing awareness that women are legitimate water users and not just domestic water users, they're also agricultural water users. Um, so that could be through like running workshops, running advertising, and you know, just really getting those conversations started. Yeah. And then for how can we increase access to investment and finance? That that's that's a bit tricky because in India a lot of um, a lot of uh, investment is based on land ownership and women disproportionately don't own land. So for this reason, I think it's important to introduce like micro finance schemes um, to just give women, give women that uh, economic agency to be able to make those decisions. So I would say take it like a step at a time but make sure that each step is like a strong, bold step that, you know, every time we're, we're creating new conversations and new political spaces. Thank you very much, Ileana. A last question. We received a number of questions, but unfortunately time is catching up on us. And that goes to Anjal, uh, where um, Luz Rooney asks, is there a partnership with the Indian School of Business and the women in the village to mentor them and help them better address these issues? Now, Anjal, I'm not sure whether you'll be able to ask it because you studied or you worked there, uh, but uh, if you could uh, keep your answer short, thank you. Yeah, thanks so much, um, uh, Felix. Uh, there's no partnership at the moment, but I've been part of Women for Water, uh, Water Partnership earlier and uh, uh, other gender networks as well. And I'll be reaching out to Meena Das if there's anything that we can do together. So thank you so much for this question. Thank you very much. Well, that brings us to the end of our webinar, the third one of a series of eight. And uh, just to close off, and I think I would like to, to say uh, that very inspiring words uh, that Mina uh, started with in a video, uh, the way of a floating life and the power of women uh, and how climate change has made a huge adverse uh, impact on their lives and how they really take it and uh, let their voices heard 
uh, around the world and how agriculture can be saved uh, during uh, various aspects and, and, and how uh, the world is waiting for the women to take charge. So, so thank you very much for our panelists. We really appreciate it. I believe it uh, added value to our knowledge, understanding uh, the role of women uh, in agriculture. And thank you very much for the uh, Marit and her team for organizing uh, this webinar. And we look forward to engage with you in the next uh, webinar uh, that is in a couple of days. So with that, uh, we appreciate. And as I've said, uh, this will then be loaded on YouTube uh, for you to access the presentations, everything that were presented uh, this afternoon. So I wish you a, a very good uh, evening, afternoon and morning, and let us work together. Uh, and as women, let us uh, tackle the challenge uh, of uh, climate change and everything that goes with that. Uh, so thank you very much and uh, goodbye. Thank, thank you. you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you for giving this opportunity. By thank you, Ivan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.